Hello everyone, back to tune into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 14th of March. We'll be able to send out beyond that. We'll send you best ECM ensemble for your trying to cover weeks. We'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us a more or less to the end of March. I should get on back for you in a moment. Just say that the first video we say was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos of content. And thank you so much everybody for uh, doing that for Gav's weather bits. Thank you so much. We need to put on around 67 subscribers to get ourselves to 18.1k. So if you could give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe, you'll be incredible. We'll thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, let's start off in the stratosphere. So a uh, further warming taking place at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the Arctic and the North Pole. So you have a black line is up and down, up and down, up and down through the uh, winter. Very, very strange winter of repeated warmings of the stratosphere. Another uh, warming currently going on. We are seeing the temperature at minus 30 now in terms of temperature at 10 HPA. And this is set to December. So we set to send the zone of wind into reverse today, actually. If you go a little bit lower down to 10 HPA, closer to the top of the sphere, um, there we can see, no, I'm going to go a little bit lower down to 3 HPA, sorry, um, closer to the top of the sphere. Bear warming is also taking place as well. It'll be very close now to uh, minus 40 degrees. So uh, this is how the temperature is currently looking. Um, at a 10 HP in terms of latest GFS run, these yellow uh, colours here from Russia pushing into the Arctic of the North Pole, that is the latest uh, stratospheric warming event. We are displaced from a polar vortex again at its roots into North America, North Atlantic and uh, northern parts of Europe as well. The coming days will see the warming event intensifying even more over Western Russia and also northern parts of Europe and the displacement of them of the polar vortex continues there into uh, Canada and also into North America as well. That's so look as we get to the end of the GFS run. So by then the warmings are beginning to uh, ease down uh, a little bit. Let's say it looks like we've got seven zone wind into reverse today. So this is from weather is cool. Currently the zone of wind is very weak but still just about positive. As you see there with that uh, blue line, very close now though to the zero line. And if we put in the GFS on side, what you see is going to uh, carry the, uh, the um, zone of wind is going to carry on dropping over the uh, coming uh, out of a few days. And actually, it looks like we're going to keep the zone of wind into reverse for the next two weeks. So a sustained two week reversal of the zone of wind being predicted there starting today. So that uh, means that the sudden stratospheric warming event is occurring right now as we speak. Um, a sustained sudden stratospheric warming, a major warming event. Uh, this is from University of Berlin from last night's ECMWF, again confirming that the prediction is zone wind will reverse today. This is for the 4th of March today. Zone wind predicted to go down to uh, minus 0 0.9 ms at 60 degrees north. And we keep the zone wind in reverse all the way to 240 hours, which is day 10, 13th of March. Remember, this is from last night. Um, still, then, we are at minus 5.4 at minus ms. So, again, uh, a sustained reversal of zone wind lasting at least 10 days. And appearing at 30 HPA as well with that uh, zone wind reversal. The first day of zone wind is predicted to reverse at 30 HPA is the 8th of March. Takes a few days to get from the... Um, 10 HPA level to the 30 HPA level, of course. But by um, 8th of March, down to uh, uh, minus 0 0.1 MS at 60 degrees north. And um, still with a reverse of zone wing at, uh, <coughs> so at 144 hours at 30 HPA, 9th of March at minus 1.3 MS. So a reversal of zone wing sustained over several days, 10 HPA. A major sudden stratospheric warming event is currently underway and occurring. We shall keep you updated. Central temperature is now sitting at 4.1, which is 1.6 degrees below the 61 to 99 average. That is the visual to yesterday to the 3rd of March. What a contrast to February when we was at plus 7.8. Incredible contrast. Uh, of course, that is only for the first three days of the month, though, and we'll probably start picking up as the uh, month goes along. Give that March typically 
not always, but typically is a warming month. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for net coverage which in Oxford today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Oxford. We're starting off around to a little bit below average today. And for the next few days, we see the upper air temperatures lifting back up close to average low by the time we get through to around the 10th, 11th of March, so later this week. Um, but overall, looking a bit on the cool side, I have to say, really, <laughs> from more on. <coughs> oh, sorry, I've yeah, got, got a bit of a tickle back today. Um, yeah, so uh, the upper air temperatures really uh, around to a little bit below average from start. But there is a lot of scatter, especially around here later on which is like the middle to the second half of March. You see quite a bit of scatter then. But, um, but it looks overall a little bit on the cool side, I think. Certainly for the next week to 10 days, anyway. Nothing particularly exciting going on with the temperatures. And we see this on the temperature anomalies on the uh, 4th to 12th of March. Generally close to average, not a particularly big deviation either way. Precipitation anomalies from the 4th to 12th of March. They're coming out. A little bit wet and average down in the south, and a little bit drier than average up in the north. The latest wind from that from Earth, no school.net, shows that we've got low pressure to our west and southwest today, and that could be bringing more wet weather across the country in the next few hours. Okay, let's start going through chart data. When we start the latest UK, but you're right, it's looking for a big diet on Thursday, high pressure. Over Scandinavia, wind gently coming in from a southeasterly direction. Uh, then we start to bring low pressure towards that uh, high pressure when we get to around Saturday. That could bring wet weather into the south and the west. Potentially quite an unsettled weekend shaping up here with this area of low, particularly for England and Wales. And that shifts away southwards by this time next week, 11th of March. We are bringing the wind back around to the east. That might start to see some colder air beginning to dig in from the east as well. I can't, again, with that high pressure of Scandinavia, winds coming in from southeast on Thursday. Uh, and those southeast winds continue through Friday into the weekend. Eventually, though, the low pressure shifts away from south, we start turning wind into the east. So we begin to pull some cooler or colder air in from the east. That's how we get to, that's how we get to the 11th of March, next Monday. Um, now, then we're between the high pressure of Scandinavia and reaching up from the Azores. Complicated pattern. There's probably going to be a weather front through there and further outbreaks of rain. The KMA, again, looking like this. So, uh, low pressure to our south at the end of the week into the weekend with an easterly flow. That brings some very wet weather into the south. Maybe something a little bit wintry on the northern edge. Then the low pressure gets out of the way. Uh, we pull wind back into the east and from the northeast. It's quite cold there up towards the middle of March with the uh, KMA eventually finishing up with high pressure ridging through the country, probably keeping the frost and fog going. The GFS midnight run, again, with that area of high pressure centred over Scandinavia, winds gradually gently pulling in from a southeasterly direction. Into uh, the weekend, we've got low pressure south, high pressure to the north. Again, winds coming in from the east, so looking uh, quite cold for the north anyway, over the weekend. Wet down in the south, <laughs> plenty of cold rain to come there. And uh, we keep uh, low pressure coming, but we start to turn it milder. I head up towards day 10, this area of low, quite a deep low, being for wet, windy weather. Um, and uh, southwesterly winds returning with that area of low then. In the right range of GFS, uh, midnight road just say generally unsettled, really generally cool and unsettled, nothing very exciting happening there. Um, but 6 there again with that high pressure at Scandinavia on uh, Thursday, bringing these gentle southeasterly winds and then low pressure comes in from the Atlantic over the weekend, bringing wet weather into south. The north is mainly dry and uh, cooler or colder with those easy winds as well. Early next week, wet windy air starts sweeping in off the Atlantic with the Atlantic, uh, uh, with the low pressure from the Atlantic again, along with milder southwesterly winds as well. And we keep the low pressures coming into extended range as well. So the deluge goes on really with, uh, you know, with, with the uh, GFS midnight and six head runs. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to say one for doing that. Why not drop a comment and so much about this and all of our videos and content? Don't get to tell your friends about gas weather. Well, Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Okay, we've got the GM coming up uh, next. High pressure 
again is to our east. We're pulling in those southeast winds as we go through Thursday into the end of week. Southeast is back into the east. That starts to pull some cooler or colder air in from the east as well as this area low pressure zips away. So proper easily with the GM by the beginning of next week. All, all of the model output. I think the gem is the most easterly today. And this starts to bring some much colder air in from the east by the beginning of next week as well. Those east winds carry on uh, also are sustained. So we're all, we, we're all cold for the early part of uh, next week. Possibly even with some snow showers in the east. Uh, day 9, so I see low pressure trying to push up from the southwest. Could have fun and games with that. If it was to verify that situation at day 10 with the GM, which is the 14th of March. Again, we're putting in a strong easterly wind, low pressure to the south as well. Upper air temperature looking cold. Um, snow possible there for the middle of March with the GEM. It's pretty isolated within the rest of model output, but it has got support, I suppose, for the KMA. And let's see what the ECM is showing. Again, we've got high pressure. Uh, Scandinavian wind gently coming in from the southeast through the uh, end of the week. Into the weekend, that south easy turns into an easterly with high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south. It'll start being colder with those east winds, although upper air temperatures are relatively mild for the south. Eventually, we open the door to more of an east north easy and colder air starts to trickle in from the east as well, but not for long. Low pressure then back in through days 8, 9, 10, bringing more wet weather, but also milder southwesterly winds once again. As I say, the GM with that strong easterly and really quite cold, so it looks isolated compared to uh, the rest of the model output, other than, I suppose, the KMA. This is the precipitation forecast based on that uh, ECM run from tometeo.com. It's today's showy rain moving up from the southwest today and tonight and a very something dry about for the rest of the week a few showers around but quite a bit of dry weather until we get towards the end of week and weekend and then perhaps start to turn a bit more showery for wet and windy weather starts coming in through the early part of next week with further wind and rain taking us up towards day 10. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 gets us to the 14th of March 15 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure to our north and northwest, and around that will be bringing wind from an easterly or a northeasterly direction. Low pressure is to the south with that as well. So um, wet in the, wet to the south, high pressure to the north, um, and probably quite cold with those east northeast winds as well. Thirteen with high pressure bridging through the country. That's probably going to be dry and relatively pleasant. Although it could be a bit chilly, but shouldn't be too bad given the uh, strength of the March sunshine at the moment. We've got 12 with low pressure, though, in the ascendancy. They look very unsettled. And we've got 11, including control, and the operation run again with low pressure in from off the Atlantic. So if we put the 12 here, together with the uh, with the 11 here, and then the 15 there, together with 13 there, we've virtually got 50-50 split, I think, between the um, uh, internal ensembles today. And then two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got, will get us to the 19th of March. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure somewhere towards Greenland and Iceland. Around that, we bring the wind in from the east or the northeast. So it could be drier but colder there as we get into the third week of March. And then CFSB2, finally, these are 500 millibar heights and I've broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 4th to the 10th of March. The coming week, we'll have high pressure to our north north east. Low pressure will be to the west and winds coming up from that southeasterly direction. Week 2 will be the 11th through to the 17th of March with high pressure to the north. Again, we could well be bringing in the wind from a chilly easterly direction with that. Week three is going to be the 18th. <coughs> I'll show you once again, everybody. It's going to be 18th, 24th of March with low pressure across the north and west of Europe. High pressure is up towards Greenland. And so that looks rather cool and unsettled, I think. And week four carries that on. It's the 25th to the 31st of March. Big blocking area of high pressure around Greenland. Trough of low pressure part over the UK and Ireland. Jetstream will be doing something like that. Looking potentially rather cold and wintry even as we get to that to 
week four period. Bear in mind that is four weeks away, it's a long way out, and it's the end of March. It's not going to be that wintry, but you can still get snow even at the end of March, even into April, you can still get snow, and uh, otherwise, you know, probably quite like cold rain with that. Oh dear. Spring 2024 looks like it's going to be delayed, I'm afraid. We'll see. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't get to friends about gals, whether it's we thank you so everybody for doing that. Right, I'll just tell you what's happening on the channel tomorrow. We're going to have a 6 m UK weather forecast. Got the extended EC uh, look ahead for today, look ahead for the UK, for the rest of Europe as well. And also there'll be a 10 to 14 day. So please keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.